Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela Braniff. Today I am doing a collaboration, which I don't do a ton of these, but when my friend Natalie reached out to me about doing this and the topic, I thought this could be such an incredibly helpful video for so many moms. I'm like, definitely I'm in. So this is a collaboration. We're gonna be talking about mistakes that I've made as a mom. So there's a handful of other moms here on YouTube who are going to be doing similar videos to this. And there'll be a playlist linked down below in the description box so that you guys can watch this video and then go on and watch all of them. I think that not only could it be helpful to you, but it can also be encouraging to you if you feel like, I'm the only one. I think so many times as moms, we feel like when we're screwing up or messing up or feel like we are, that we're the only ones. Everyone else has it together and we're just, we're the only ones who make these kinds of mistakes. And that's just not true. And so I have no idea what mistakes they're gonna share. They don't know what I'm sharing, but I'm certain if you're feeling some kind of way about your mothering right now and parenting and raising kids, um, that you're going to see yourself reflected in some of the thoughts and feelings of the other women in this collaboration. So definitely go and check out that that playlist after you are done watching this video. So if you are new here, if you're coming from some of these other ladies videos and maybe you don't know me and you don't watch my channel, I will just give you the cliff note version. Uh, we are a large family. There are 10 of us. We have eight children. Uh, my oldest child is 14 and my youngest child is about one and a half. So we've got eight kids in that spread there, five girls, three boys. Um, our kids have come to us through many different avenues in terms of I've given birth to some of them and we've adopted some of them, some of them domestic, some of them in international. So we've kind of got a, a bit of an eclectic family. I think that a lot of these mistakes and the things that I've learned from them have been magnified by those relationships and the way that our family has come together and the way that our family has grown. It definitely kind of puts a magnifying glass on any kind of problems that you have. Kids do that in general to parents but adding that extra element of trauma and adoption and stuff has definitely uh, given me a different lens to view mothering and parenting and raising kids through. All right, so I do tend to talk a lot, especially when I'm talking about things I'm passionate about. I can kind of go down rabbit trails very easily. So I've written down and I'm going to try to stay on point because there are other videos in this collaboration that I want you to watch. So I, I want to make this bite size. Um, I'm happy to expand on these things and do another video in the future if there's more about these topics that y'all want to discuss. Leave me a comment down below and let me know, but I'm just going to try to knock these out uh, and be concise if at all possible for me. All right, so the first mistake that I think that I made really early on was believing that my mothering, my parenthood, my, my parenting style had to look like someone else's. It had to emulate some kind of parenting style that fit within a box, that fit within a book. I think for a lot of people, their default mechanism is to go back to the way that they were raised. And whether you had a great childhood or a not a great childhood, um, that can be problematic in many ways because there's just, I think we can look back at generations and see that as we learn, as we understand things more, as we understand the brain, as we understand the body, as we understand these things more, we understand trauma trauma loss, what it does to us, it does give us more answers. And so some of the tools that we have in our toolbox today are not things that our parents had or their parents had. So I think every generation wants to do a little bit better and it's not because we don't appreciate our parents or, or think that they did a bad job. It's because everybody wants to take that thing and, and do it even better. But one of the biggest mistakes I made was not really realizing that, just thinking that I had to emulate exactly um, what I had seen or as I was learning about other parenting styles, you know, attachment parenting in particular, that I had to do everything like that style or I was doing something wrong. And to me, again, I'm, a, I'm an eclectic type person when it comes to anything that I'm learning about or trying to implement. I take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I mix it all together and I make my own thing. And I think that's what everybody has to do because there's just no one size fits all for parenting. There's things that are gonna work for me that would never in a million years work for you and vice versa. So I would say the first mistake I made was thinking that parenting was this sort of cookie cutter mold and that everything was going to be the same across the board. So I guess to sum that up, I would say do it your way. The last little caveat that I would add to that is if you do have childhood trauma, if you do have things in your childhood that you maybe still struggle with, again, you might not know it until you start parenting and then it smacks you in the face. 
but do the work to heal yourself. Do the work to heal yourself from any childhood trauma you have, anything you may be bringing into your new family dynamic as you add children. Um, those things just get magnified and it is very hard to parent from a healthy place if you are not at a healthy place and you haven't um, done the, the work through therapy or counseling or whatever it is that you need to heal yourself from any of your own childhood traumas or issues. And again, that is a spectrum that's gonna look a little bit different to everybody. All right, number two mistake that I think that I made was, was kind of going with this old adage that like, I'm the parent, it's my way, I never make any mistakes, I just, you know, as parents sometimes we can, we can do things wrong and I think the ability to apologize to your kids is so important. And there was something about that that was really hard for me to navigate because I kind of had this like parents are the authority role, do as I say, not as I do, right? So if I make a mistake, doesn't matter. Do as I say, not as I do, right? And that's actually just not helpful. And it, it doesn't breed trust in a relationship with your kids. It doesn't show them your humanity. It doesn't show them this example of like, look, we are all human. We are going to make mistakes. And I wanted my kids to know that when I made a mistake, I could be honest with them about it. It didn't diminish my authority as the parent, but it, it to me, it strengthens your role as a leader. Like if you think about yourself in a work environment or anywhere else, a sports environment, if you're doing team sports or something, you know, the ability to to apologize when you've made the mistake, the ability to acknowledge that, hey, I'm not perfect, I, I, I screwed up, I messed up. Even starting from an early age, for me it was, th it was things like raising my voice um, and being overly aggressive or yelling about something or losing my temper really fast and just, ah! And then I'll go to my kids and say, I'm sorry, I lost my temper, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry that I yelled, I should have tried to you know, remain calm, I should have, because it helps them to see that, that they too are going to make mistakes and the importance of apologizing for those mistakes because I think that that's a very useful tactic, not only in family relationship dynamics, but also out in the world, out in your relationships with other people um, as you navigate life without your parents the ability to be the kind of person that owns their crap. I fear for our world generations of people who just always want to push their problems on everybody else and blame everybody else and taking some ownership for the mistakes that you've made, apologizing for them if you've made them, and owning your crap, you know, and just saying, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Now, of course, the secondary little piece of that has to be that not only do you recognize it but and apologize for it, but that you're gonna do something to change it in the future because apologies become hollow and meaningless if you're constantly um, apologizing for the same thing without ever making any changes. So Number three parenting mistake would be thinking that it's going to be an A plus B equals C type dynamic with raising kids or that there would be some level of appreciation coming my way from my children. <laughs> and even one layer deeper than that, thinking that I would be able to look at my kids from a really young age and know that my parenting was successful, know that the way that I was doing things was working. Um, and, and I think almost sort of like, I guess the best way to put it was like this immediate you know, gratification of seeing that I taught you this lesson and now you've learned it. Parenting is a journey of literally gardening souls and hearts. You are sowing seeds that in many cases you will not reap the harvest from until years and years later. That can be very daunting when you feel like you are doing this thankless job where every day you are giving your best, you are giving 100%, and the tiny little humans that you're giving this to in don't show any appreciation, don't seem to recognize all your hard work, don't say thank you. In fact, they might poop on your shoe or something, right? Like, not only are they not grateful, but they almost seem indignant about the things that they're doing to you. Uh, it is truly a journey of sowing seeds and reaping harvest at a later time, and the character things that you're working on. You may be working on something that's a very specific character trait with one of your kids that you see needs work, 
And you're going to question whether or not it's getting through to them, whether or not anyone is even listening to you. Do they hear the things you're saying? Although I can tell you that they are seeing the things you're doing more than they're hearing the things you're saying. So it's always good to be a, a good representative of what you're looking for from your kids. But you can feel like you are just screaming into the abyss with kids. Like I'm saying these same things over and over again and are they listening? Does anybody get it? And then it, it can take years until your kids become teenagers or older before you get to see those seeds, how they've blossomed, how they've taken root in your child's heart, how they have made their character stronger, how they have helped them to be a more morally sound person, a good person, somebody who cares about others. Um, and I think it's easy too to see good and bad things that your kids do as directly reflective of you without recognizing, again, the humanity, the humanness, the mistakes that they're going to make too. You really can't take too much credit for the good things that they do, just like you can't beat yourself up um, and take all the blame for maybe mistakes or, or bad things that they do. Which okay. brings me to number four, which is thinking that my kids were going to be clones of me when in fact they're actually more like mirrors. I think that we intrinsically have this desire to make our kids like us. If there's good things that we see, positive things that we see about ourselves, things we like, things we enjoy, we wanna make our kids like us. We want them to like the same things we do. We want them to think the same way that we do. We really kind of have this tendency to almost want to make clones out of our kids. And the reality is, is that while they are mirrors, they will reflect so many of the things that you say, do, the ways that you behave. They are not ever, they're not clones of you. So they're not going to be exactly like you. They're not going to even necessarily have the same interests and hobbies and maybe even not the same goals or dreams or, you know, they really are their own incredibly unique little person. And it's really our job as parents to kind of keep pruning and allowing them to grow into who God created them to be, what he intended for their lives, not what we and our, again, humanness see and want from our kids, but what does he want for them? What does he want for their lives? What's the trajectory of their life going to be? And how can I, uh, how can I help you on that path to becoming who you were supposed to be? Not necessarily just another copy of me. The mirror piece of it I think is really important though and it was a lesson that my mom mentioned to me with my first child when she was one and a half years old and there are so many like bad little habits that we have things that we say and do ways that we respond and I think toddlers are really such a great example of this is trying to teach them when they're getting angry or having tantrums and things like that if you're responding with that same level of like they're angry so you're angry we're not bringing down the temperature of the room in any way. We're just meeting them up here. And we, I think we're all guilty of that. I know that I for sure am. But kids really are such incredible mirrors to show us um, our faults and our shortcomings, uh, the ways in which we maybe don't uh, walk out what we say that we care about or what we say that we value. Because what I see reflected in my kids is so much more about the way that I am, the things that I do, than it is the things that I say. They, as they get older, they hear my words more, I can have more of a conversation, but when they're younger, it's just so much of mimicking behavior. When they see your gentleness, when they see your softness, when they see certain things, they're gonna mimic those things. Um, when they see you quick to anger, when they see you raising your voice and yelling, they're gonna potentially mimic those things as well. Now again, every kid's different and some just have different personalities that aren't entirely reflective, but but I think it's always a good place to start. Um, and that's a lesson that I've learned is that the best place to start when I feel like my kids are behaving in a way that I don't like is to look at me. What might I be doing um, that's just reflecting back through them? Uh, that's always the best place for me to start. Not always where we end up, not always the right answer, but it's generally a great place to start when I see a behavior in my child that I don't like um, is to actually look at myself first. And the last thing, number five, maybe this should have been number one, I'm gonna try not to get on a soapbox. When I was first having children and coming into this world of motherhood, I was very young, I had my first child at 22, and I very quickly realized that the world actually didn't have a lot of respect for me being a mom. 
um, for me being just a mom, for me being a stay-at-home mom, um, I really felt this almost like sense of shame that I wasn't contributing to the world, that I didn't um, have this job that was, you know, doing something important. And I really did struggle a lot with seeing the value or feeling like others didn't value what I was doing raising these kids. It felt a little bit like, um, you know, well, gosh, the feminists work so hard so that we could, you know, go to work and, and, you know, climb the corporate ladder if we wanted to. And in many ways, that piece of the feminist movement, there's many pieces to the feminist movement, but that piece couldn't quite reconcile mothers, women choosing to stay home and raise their kids and that being what they wanted to do and being happy in that. And it couldn't quite reconcile that, so it just left it out. And that's been problematic as we've gone on because now we kind of have women that are at these odds with each other about whether or not to have kids, whether or not to go to work. And instead of being able to respect each other's choices and see the value and praise each other's choices, there's been a lot of time spent kind of tearing it down. And so it's that's reflected across society. And then it ends up you know, sort of weighing on our hearts as we become mothers and feeling like the world doesn't value us um, for, for the bad A mothers that we are. The mistake that I made was thinking that I needed to wait for others to give me respect and dignity in my job, in my role as a mom. The only person, the only human that can actually validate your role and what you're doing truly is you. If you sit around waiting for the world to respect your role as a mother, now we can keep fighting for that and pushing for that and I absolutely do and will continue that. But what I learned was that I'm the one who can give myself that dignity. I'm the one who can demand the respect. I'm the one who cannot shy away when someone says, what do you do? And I say, I'm just a mom. I'm just a stay at home mom. I'm the one who can show up in places, show up online or whatever, and not feel like I must denigrate motherhood, who must feel like I have to shame my kids, shame my husband, and basically become a daily alcoholic in order to show the world that I'm some kind of martyr instead of being a mother and being proud of that and knowing that my role is really freaking important in this world and I don't need other people to validate that for me. I don't need other people to tell me that this role has meaning, has value in the world. I'm just gonna put my dang head down, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna keep believing that and I'm also not going to become smaller. I'm not going to say, just a mom, just a stay at home mom. Um, I'm not going to allow anyone else to invalidate my role as a mother and the importance of that role. I think the biggest mistake that we make is putting that, putting our dignity in the hands of other people who have no right to hold that, have no right to hold that over us, have no right to give us value or take value away from us. That's something that so many moms are handing over. And the last thing I'd say about that is, is dying on the altar of relatability and authenticity um, in order to seem like you're being a relatable mom. I think always when we try to shift the pendulum, whenever there's something that's wrong, our society just likes to overcorrect and then we have to come back to the middle. So my push right now is for us to come back to the middle. Making motherhood seem like the, you know, I don't know, something from a TV show like the Brady Bunch and everything's perfect or whatever. That's, you, that's not good. That's not good and it's not, it's not true. But swinging the pendulum the other way to be so self-deprecating that it turns into shaming, um, to make it seem like it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you, to make it seem like every single day life is such a mess that you can't brush your teeth, you can't stand your husband who doesn't help, he's just lazy and your kids are brats and they're throwing tantrums and it's like we swung the pendulum the other way to seem relatable and authentic. We've kind of blown it up into this thing where it's become like a badge of honor to be just a mess all the time and to seem like motherhood is the literal worst. And it's really no wonder that there's a lot of the younger generation that has no interest in having kids because look at what we've shown them that motherhood is through social media and Target t-shirts that are like, you know, wine mom and like you just can't get through a day with your kids without having wine. 
it's not reality. Reality is, is that there's good and there's bad and there must be a balance. We just need to swing the pendulum back to the middle a little bit where we're being a little bit more reasonable about the good and the bad. Motherhood parenting is full of a little bit of both, right? There's hard days, there's good days. I said I wasn't gonna go on a rabbit trail and here I am rabbit trailing. I just think that the reason that so many moms are feeling so miserable and unhappy today is because of unmet expectations, is believing, setting themselves up for this like, this is what it has to look like, this is what it's supposed to look like, these are the expectations and I'm not meeting them so now I feel like a failure, now I feel sad, now I feel like I just can't do it and it's too hard and it's just, it's insane. It's insane what we're doing to each other. It's insane what we're doing to mothers. It's insane uh, the way that we are making motherhood out for the next generation. So anyways, that's another topic for another day. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go down a rabbit trail. I hope that I didn't just like ruin this entire video for you because I had to go down that, that, that hole. Anyway, sorry. So those are some of the mistakes that I've made as a mom. They're not even all of them. I can keep going and going and going, but I'm not, we're gonna stick with five. Be sure to check out the playlist down below to go check out the other moms here on YouTube who have participated in this collaboration. Go watch their videos, learn from them, um, and, and see that you're not alone. We all struggle with these things. The more that we can lean on each other and see that we're not alone in this journey, and the more that we can try to level set our expectations of what it looks like to be a mom, I think the healthier this next generation will be. So that's it for me today, y'all. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye. Tender and kind, built over time. This is my love. Steady and pure, patient and sure, this is my love for you.